Welcome back, friends. Last time we set up a basic ERC20 token that's going to form the backbone of our Curve Stable coin. We did this by just importing a template. It's a great way to get started with Viper. Look at examples, see how you can build off them. Today, though, we're going to learn how we can build a contract anew from scratch. Before we get going, let's look a bit at the GitHub structure. You should be following along with the companion GitHub repository, which is everything you need. We're currently in the Lesson 2 contract directory, and from this lesson forward, all of the lessons are going to contain a baseline file structure that looks like this. There's going to be an unsolved folder, which will contain all the work we did in the previous lesson, and add a few tests for what we're going to cover in this lesson. When you first start out, if you run the brownie tests, you'll see that it should not pass, but the solution file will contain the solved version, so if you get stuck, you'll know what to do. If you want to know how the tests differ between last time and this time, we include the diff in this tests.diff. And this is telling us that we've adjusted the conf test to add this minter fixture, which is going to be deploying a brand new minter contract. And within unsolved.tests, we have a new test minter.py test. And this is simply looking to see if the minter has deployed correctly and contains an attribute called mint. So all we need to do to get this test from failing, like it's done over here, to passing, is to add a contract called minter with a mint function. So let's get to work. I'm going to pop into the unsolved folder. And before we go too far on this, let's talk a bit about Viper style. Viper places a huge emphasis on readability. And part of this implicit contract is that you adhere to the style guide. Viper cares a lot about incredibly readable code, as we saw in the previous lesson, where we looked at how Viper promotes readability for the purposes of security and auditability. As we look through this, we note that there's a heavy emphasis on several, several different things, but what's most relevant to us here in setting this up is the internal documentation. We want to make sure that our code is well documented from the start so we don't have a massive chore at the end to go through and, and redocument everything from scratch. There's supposed to be a readme.md, and certainly our default token came with this. Let's just go ahead and spruce this up and calling this a curve stable coin, a sample stable coin backed by curve. So when new people come to the repository, they'll know what's going on. We'll take all the default installation instruction and drop that a little bit lower. We're going to be keeping an eye on this th documentation throughout the lesson. Let's get started by creating our minter.vy. All Viper files are presumed to have a .vy extension. Very first thing we need to do, structure of any new contract is it has to include the version pragma. There's an analog, of course, to this in Solidity, where you have to tell it what version of Solidity you like to use to compile or which range of versions. Viper is using an NPM style syntax where you could pass the exact version or you can include the up caret to say anything above a certain version. We'll go ahead and launch this as version 0.3.3. Next up, let's talk about NAT spec metadata. In addition to all the style guide, which is recommended reading, Take a look at the uh, NatSpec metadata in which you can document the functions and have this pass through to the end user. At the very top of the contract, there's a lot of properties that you can use, as well as function tagging that can be done directly. And this tag section describes the various tags available. So we're, let's go ahead and start our contract out on the right foot by entering triple quotes, a title of Curve Stablecoin Minter License will set to MIT. The author will attribute to Curve Finance. The notice is a uh, notice that's passed through to end users. We'll tell them they can mint a stablecoin backed by Curve. And dev notes for any developers reading this will say that this is a sample implementation of an ERC 20 backed stable coin. So anyone who likes can fork this and remove the curve logic and launch this against anything. Great way to start things off. 
Now, we saw that to pass our tests over here, we're going to need to include a function called mint. So going further down the structure of a contract, we notice that there's a sort of base unit of all smart contracts, which are functions. Functions look just like Python. So if you're familiar with Python, you'll find that this is pretty easy to implement. The only thing is all functions have to be decorated with a scope. Uh, we're only going to talk about external for now. Uh, these are going to be functions that are appearing when you go to, like, for example, etherscan, anything that you'd like to be publicly readable. We'll call our function mint so we can pass the test. We're not going to pass anything to it for the time being. And we'll simply say when we get to this function, pass. So the only thing left to do would be to document this function. These use slightly different contexts. So we don't have, for example, the title and license, um, but we can pass parameters and return values if they exist. For the time being, there's not too much going on for the function, so we'll pass through a notice that this function is intended to mint a quantity of stable coins, although it doesn't do so at the moment. And we'll note to developers that this function is intentionally not implemented. So no one is surprised if they see this function is not working. Now that we've got something here, let's go ahead and rerun our brownie tests and see if this passes muster. We're going to get into future units a bit more how we can decorate these functions, how we can store variables in the contract, how we can interact with them, how these different scopes work. But for the time being, this is a perfectly basic sort of hello world contract. It is easy to understand for anyone who comes across it. And as we can see, our test minter has passed. So we know that it's a viable function that has fulfilled this unit. See you next unit.